this is exciting. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you're going to learn how to cut out patterned paper. The patterned paper we're going to be using is one of the freebies that you can get during celebration, and it is called the Flight and Airy Designer Series Paper. Okay, there are some tips and tricks that we'll go over. My name is Kimberly Smith and I'm the papered chef. And yes, I pretty much tried, <laughs> tried the ball. And there are a couple that I got to cut out. So I wanna be clear with what you can do with your scan and cut and what you can't do with your scan and cut. When you use your scan and cut, you need to make sure that you're picking images that have well-defined outlines. This piece of paper here, which I saved a little bit for you, or we'll just use a clean sheet. We, this piece of paper here has pretty much well-defined outlines. I didn't know that like this little flower was getting cut off. No big deal. I didn't realize like that was getting cut off a little, but this paper did beautifully because it's, it, there's well-defined outlines. So what do I mean by that? I'm just talking about like each little piece has a little outline around the edges. I didn't need any pencil tricks, but of course, if I would have used a pencil trick on these pieces, this paper would have come out a little better. However, the easiest paper to start with is going to be this piece here because this piece here is just like the scan and cut user's dream. These were so easy. I, I didn't have to use the pencil hardy at all, but I did take some notes to show you. And when I did use the pencil, it was very rare. It was only on this, these couple birds. Just to, and I didn't even have to use it on the whole, the whole bird, just a little bit of the front. I'll show you what the pencil trick is, but pretty much most of it didn't need it. Now, this one, though, I didn't, I'm not going to cut out the whole page, but let me show you this one on a contrasting background and talk about the success rate before we get started. So when I, I tried this and I cut it out and I wrote some notes, there are, I cut out 32 of these. And that's not counting out the half ones. Now, I didn't cut the half ones straight away. I had to move the paper up and scan it again. I moved the paper around a little bit. But I cut out 32 birds. This one was too close to the edge. It didn't cut out. Out of the 32 birds, 27 did not need the pencil trick. So out of the 32 birds, five needed a pencil trick, which I'll show you the pencil trick. That's an 84% success rate. So that's pretty darn good. This one, a little bit trickier, this little piece. And then these pieces, do I have something fun in store for you for these pieces? When you can't cut the paper out as is, I'm going to show you how to just cut it out this way instead. When, when patterns are too close together and there are no edges and you can't cut out pieces, we're just going to make ourselves some little frames and you can use these for card elements. Stick around, you're going to see how I put this on a card and all that good stuff. So, if you're new to my channel, we do a lot of scan and cut stuff here and we work with, scan and, we work with Stampin' Up! products. I'm a U.S. Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you'd like to get this paper for free until February 29th, please use my, the link to my Stampin' Up! store, which is close to the top of the description of this video. So we're, we're putting this on the mat, and I'm using the CM350 today only because I'm working on a scan and cut course, and I just happen to have the CM350 out, but this is going to work with any model of machine. The other one does use the color trick, but, you know, we're only going to do one trick at a time. So let's just say it doesn't matter which model you have. Let's just say you have a... A, um, an a STX model, you're still going to just go, whoops, I didn't mean to turn it off. Let me go ahead and turn this piece. I'm turning off the backlight. If you have an STX model, I'm using a CM350 model, but if you have a different model, your, your settings might be in a little bit different place, but you're still going to be doing the same kinds of things with your scan and cut. When you turn on your machine, you're always going to see pattern and scan, no matter which kind of model of scan and cut you're using. If you don't see pattern and scan, you might be using what's called a design and cut and not an actual scan and cut. There's a little glare there. So we are using a scan and cut. So the first thing you're gonna click on is scan. And then you're gonna click on direct cut because we're gonna directly cut out these birds. I also wanna load the mat because otherwise I have to hold my hand here, <laughs> keep the mat from falling out. So this is the button to load the mat and keep your, make sure your fingers don't get under the roller down there. That's why I moved my hand while I was loading. Now I have, my hands are free. So we're going to select, after we select scan, we're going to select direct cut because we're not saving anything that we're doing. We're directly cutting out these images. 
And the next question you're asked is, where do you want to save the images? Do you want to save them to your machine or to Canvas Workspace or to the cloud? We're just going to save them to the machine. This is really just temporary storage. For this paper, this paper here, and only this paper here, we are going to use black and white recognition mode. You do, it, it worked great. You don't need it, any, even though these are in color and you might be saying, well, why aren't you using color recognition mode? There's, there's so much contrast between the birds and the background, except for a few times where this really light color was touching the white. That's why we don't need to use color recognition mode. And that's, you would change the mode right here and we'll do that for another type of image, but let's just keep it on black and white and we're gonna start. If you're using an SDX model, this is a very loud machine too, by the way. This, the CM models are very loud. If you're using what's called an SDX model of machine, you might be asked if you wanna scan in 12 inches of paper or six inches. But in a CM model, we have to scan in the whole 12 inches. We don't have that option, and which is fine. And now we're gonna get rid of the unwanted bits and the birds that we don't want. So first we're gonna click okay, and we're gonna, I had to, do a little bit to get these. I'm just gonna go in to get a little section. I was able to get them all to cut out, but I did have to do, I did have to move my paper around at different times. So just so we don't cut out every single bird, I'm just gonna go ahead and select a few birds right here. All right, so let's do these birds. Now, we want to put an outline distance around the birds. So let's go ahead and click on the outline distance. So first I'm gonna make a selection, that's how to get some parts I don't want, I got rid of some parts I don't want. Then I put an outline distance around the birds. And it looks like maybe the feet, I'm gonna also ignore small objects. I'm just seeing if the feet maybe got cut off a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in and see this bird's feet got cut off and this bird's feet got cut off. Okay, so that would need a little pencil trick. So what I'm gonna do is I've selected what I want, I've done the outline distance, I'm even ignoring objects that are bigger, you know, ignoring objects that are stray on the map. But I don't want to go ahead. And, I don't want to cut out this bird or that bird because the feet are going to get cut off. So we're going to say OK. And we're going to go in here. We're going to go into this little edit. Yours is actually going to say edit if you have an SDX machine. And don't worry, I'm going to do this one more time. This is only the beginning. One more time in this mode. When you go in here to edit, you can get rid of, like I said, I'm only just zooming in. This one's feet are missing. So I'm just gonna, I wanna delete that. I wanna trash that guy and I wanna trash him. And we're gonna use the pencil trick to connect his feet. I forgot about the feet. And we're gonna click okay and we're gonna just cut. Now let's move it way over there. And it's, the other thing you wanna do before I hit start is I'm setting the blade depth. You don't need to do this on an next desk model. I'm going up to the 12, dialing back to three for stamping up designer series paper. I can now turn on my light because when you're scanning, you do not want to have lights on that go into your machine. I'm just gonna hit start, let it go. And but when you when you're scanning, don't put the light in. But after the after it starts you can put the light in. So I think personally in my professional opinion, okay, I like this model better for some things. And like this paper, I get, I just get a better even image around the outside of my, of my pattern paper. I just like CM, I like my CM models for certain things. They do, sometimes it does a better job. But if you have an SDX model, the really nice thing about that is that you have you don't have to set the blade depth. The blade depth is automatic on an SDX model. All right, lots of you guys are showing up today. Thank you, Kathy, for letting everyone know I'd be here in a minute. Hello, Diana, hello, Tracy. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Denise, thank you for being a channel member. Hello, Tracy, I'm glad you got a snack while you're waiting for me. Yeah, I was on a different Zoom before this. I have a group called Grow Your Crafty Business. It's a business builders mastermind group that we all get together on Zoom every Thursday. And I didn't realize that I didn't realize that um, Stampin' or the 
not stamp it up. I didn't realize YouTube told everybody that you guys were on here waiting for me. I did not realize because I usually don't schedule my Zooms. I just, or not Zooms. I do schedule my Zooms. I usually don't schedule my YouTubes. All right, to get these off the mat, just going to bend the mat a little bit and get them off or use your little spatula. So let me go ahead and put these on a piece of paper so you can see how great these come out without doing anything. No pencil trick, nothing. Like, imagine doing this with, I mean, imagine cutting these with scissors, guys. It would be like, let's bang our heads against the wall. I mean, who needs scissors when you have a scan and cut? And this does a better job than scissors as well because it gets into the nuances of the, the beaks. It goes around the beak. It goes around the wings. Now let's go in now and fix a couple that didn't cut out and fix the one that the feet were missing and just show you how to get some, a better success rate. Like I said, mine was, I, I cut out a lot more earlier because I did use the pencil on a few of them and because I did turn my paper. So one trick is, besides the pencil trick I'm going to show you, one thing you want to do, if you don't get a lot cutting out the first time, just turn your paper upside down and do another scan. And you're going to see you're going to get a whole different region because although I teach you how to clean your scanner plate, et cetera, et cetera, you, each, each scanner has a different, more sensitive region. So like different, different pieces will scan in better at different parts. All right, so this one needs the pencil trick. This is too light. Okay, this little part here. Da, 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 da. So I'm just taking it and where the white parts are, I'm connecting it. You don't need it. You don't need the pencil around the rest of it. It's all good. Now these little feet, you see that little gap? Just that little gap made the feet disappear. So if you want the feet to get cut out, just put a little pencil mark right there. That's all it was missing. If you want to do this a little bit to connect that little gap in the wing, that will also help. Okay, so do that. These two birds, the feet were missing. All right, and and sometimes other ones didn't get scanned in if they were too close to the edge, but like I said, you fix that by turning your paper. And these little, this little light one needs a pencil trick as well. Not always on the chest, but definitely on the top of the head. This one doesn't have feet. All right, this one could use a little bit. So all you're doing is now just fixing up a couple that didn't scan in. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cut out the whole batch, but I definitely want this one to cut out now. I'm hoping this one gets recognized. This, some of these are gonna be too close to the edge and not get recognized. And what you could do with the ones close to the edge is you can take your paper, and what I did is I moved it up, moved this paper up, and I was able to cut out these half birds. And you want half birds because sometimes it's cute to make a little design where the birds are you know up on the coming into the side of the card and all that kind of stuff. All right, so let's review this little part about how to do this. Okay, so again, we're going again. We're going to go delete all patterns. All right, we're starting back from the beginning. Let me get my stylus, which I just had in my hand. Let's see, here it is. All right, you turn on your machine, no matter what kind of machine you have. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this side light. Okay, you... I just had my stuff. Okay, there. This one. Okay. You always see pattern and scan. Okay. We're cutting out pattern paper, but we're not, we're not using a building pattern right now. We will be later on in this tutorial. So stand by for that. We are using scan. Okay. We're using direct cut because we're going to directly cut out the birds. Okay. We're going to save it to our, this is asking where you want to temporarily store the information onto our machine. Although it really doesn't matter. If you have an SDX, you can say what size mat you have six by 12 or 12, or actually not with size mat, what area of the mat you want to scan. But this one's going to scan the whole 12 by 12 and you're going to hit start. And it's, you're not, you're going to make sure you turn off your side lights. Any, not the overhead light, but any light shining into your scanner because it'll mess things up. So I turned off my back ring light and now it's going to recognize it. Yes, I'll send you a link for a stylus, Bev. Yep, you can get yourself a new stylus. Thank you for using my affiliate links. Or just use my affiliate links and then search for stylus. Use my scan and cut link, and then you can still get yourself a stylus. And I will still get credit. Okay, see how much better success we have now because we've done that pencil trick, and now the other ones got recognized. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the three ways to eliminate things that you don't want on this mat. The first way would be 
by making a selection. The first way to eliminate things you don't want. But let's just go ahead and keep it because we don't we do want these. The next way to get rid of things you don't want is called ignoring object size. There's an actual ignore object size menu item on the SDX, but in our case, we're on the CM350 or the scan and cut two. That's what we're using right now. Scan and cut two. It's more used worldwide, and that's why I sometimes do tutorials with this model. I have a lot of international audience members or viewers from YouTube, and they request this model sometimes as well. So this button here is how you ignore object size. Now, you want to ignore all the straight bits on the machine, uh, on the mat, but you don't want to ignore the very things that you're trying to cut out. So you be careful when you're ignoring object size because you could go up to, say, an inch or so, but, and you can watch these stray bits disappear. But if you go too big, then all of a sudden, the birds will start disappearing. Watch the birds start disappear. See? There goes my birds because I, I, I'm ignoring objects that are too big. So go back down and don't ignore objects that are too big. Now, I don't want any birds to disappear, so now we're just going to say okay. And the third way, the first way to get rid of things was by making a selection. The second way was ignoring object size. The third way to get rid of things is in the edit mode where we can just delete that and trash it. But before we get there, we need to put an outline distance around these items. If you don't, it's going to cut right along the bird. And we want the outline distance because it looks cute to have the white. And that's when you use metal dies or something. You also have the white edges around your items. So you, you want the outline distance. It also makes the curves more forgiving and stuff. It's really nice. So I'm using an outline distance of 0 0.04 for these birds. We're going to click OK. We're going to click OK. And now you could go into the edit mode. In this case, it's where the shapes are. And in your case, in another machine, it might just say edit. So click on there. And we're going to use this button here to select. It'll just get us. You can either use your stylus or you could just select the objects and go around and get the ones that you want. We just want that one. We want that stray bit. We're going to hit trash. We're going to click OK, and we're going to cut the rest of the birds. And I'm going to move the machine. I'm just going to click Start. It's going to say, it says two minutes, means it takes more than one and less than two. And I put this way over there because it's so loud. I can turn back on my machine, and I can say hello to you guys. Continue saying hello. All right, hello, Deborah from New South Wales, Australia. Hello, Kathy from Northeast Ohio. Hello, Faye. Hello, Phil. Hello, Luis. Hello, Lisa from Canada. Charlene from Philadelphia. Hello, Betty. Hello, Amy. And Kay from Indiana. Diane from Australia, uh, Arizona, not Australia, Arizona. Denise, thank you for being a channel member, YouTube channel member. Thank you very much. That's very nice. Thank you for your support. Hello, Deborah. Hello, Lala's Chris. Hello, Laura. Hello, Christina. Thank you for being a channel member. I'm, I'm seeing some of you guys for the first time in a while, which is really cool. <laughs> so instead, Tracy's like, I went to get a snack, and then she gets herself a glass of wine. <laughs> or she should be. Okay, hello, Cindy from Fort Myers, Florida, and Nola from Oregon. You have had a machine in your box for six years? Okay, Kim is going to bang the, the brother Br'er against her head right now. Bang, bang against my head. You have not kept your machine in your box for six years. Say it isn't so, Denise. All right, get the, get the darn thing out of the box. All right, so Barbara is asking about troubleshooting the blade. If the blade is ripping your paper, two things are happening. Most likely the first thing is happening that I'm going to tell you. The first thing that's probably happening is that this is still set on three, by the way. The first thing that's happening if your paper's ripping, most likely is that inside here, get a Q-tip because you probably have paper stuck in there. Tap, 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 get rid of the paper that's stuck in there and then you're it'll definitely you know stop your your blade your paper from ripping or get some foil kind of clean off your blade okay the other thing reason is it's too deep 
You have, you're trying to cut designer series paper and you might be like on a five and that would just what you use for stamping up cardstock. And you're like cutting through your paper. Of course it's going to rip or change your speed. There's a few reasons it could rip, but most likely you've got paper stuck in there. So put it on a blade depth of three. Anywho, let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're not done yet. We're doing the, we're getting the rest. We have a very good success rate here. Now, first thing is I get spend, bend, bend. Oh, here, let me just unload. I'm going to just unload the mat because it's easier to bend when it's unloaded. And I'm going to look for any pencil marks, which I don't see any on all the most of these. So that's good. It just came out fantastic. The ones that have pencil marks, I'm leaving on the mat so I can erase them. And I'm not going to erase them while they're on the mat. I'm just... I know one other had like some... Something on this... Okay, this one has... Eraser marks on its feet. I mean, it needs to be erased on its feet. All right, and this one has something to erase on its feet. Okay, let's check. Checking. Um, I don't know if I erase. I don't know if I put a pencil mark on that one's head. But the reason we had so many more working right now is because of the pencil trick. So don't underestimate your pencil trick. If it, it like first try to do it without the pencil. And, and, of course, trying not to cut off any feet and stuff, right? And then if you still have trouble, use your pencil trick. You don't want to... You don't want to have to... I'm just erasing. Now, don't use... Don't use the end of the pencil. Don't use this pencil to erase. It'll just mess up all your paper. Use a white eraser. I have a bunch of cool things linked in my Stampin' Up! or my Amazon store. And one thing that's really cool, and you could try these too. I think I have it in my Amazon store. So I was going to do this video. I was scheduling it today. I scheduled it earlier tonight, not realizing it emailed everybody. I really didn't know it was going to email my, view, my subscribers. Now that I know that, I'm going to try to start scheduling more lives. Instead of just, you know, doing it by the seat of my pants like five minutes before I go live. I think I'm going to start scheduling them more. Anywho, it asked me if I wanted to tag products. And I was like, what do you mean by tagging products? So it's something new that I never saw on YouTube before. And so I said, sure, I want to tag like the scan and cut. And I just thought it was going to scan like tag like I always do. But it, it, it tagged Walmart. So who knew that as an Amazon influencer, it's letting me tag the machines on Walmart now. So I've never earned a commission from Walmart. I didn't even know I could or that I was signed up to do it. I didn't even know it was an option. So I tagged it. I tagged the machine, the Scan and Cut CM350, and then I tagged the SDX125 model, which is really the one I recommend if you're going to start from scratch because it's auto blade and it's pretty darn easy to use. And it said, okay, it says, um, if anyone buys one using my link on this video, I don't know where the link is, but I would earn a commission, so I thought that was pretty cool. I'm going to see if it happens. If it happens, I will tell you. I don't know who buys what, but if it does, if anybody does click on the link, I will tell you guys if it worked. And then I will now be a Walmart affiliate without even knowing it. I mean, I got nothing against Walmart. I just, I just never became an affiliate for them. I never signed up for it. I only signed up to be one with Amazon. But YouTube asked me, and I was like, I didn't even know I was part of that program. Like, I never remember signing up for it. Let's put it that way. But it asked me to tag the machines. And I'm just cleaning up. I'm using tape to clean up. We are not done yet. We're not even close to being done. We have some really cool scan and cut things to do. So we now have... Just throwing these on here. I mean, just a ton of embellishments. And I'm going to be sharing more things to do with them. But let's just talk about, you know, a card that doesn't have these versus that does. And then later on, I'll show you more cards. But here's a card I made in my celebration club and I put some bling on it and we were having fun and using all products from celebration, the stamp sets free, the paper's free. And I thought it was really cool at the time of making it. Put some linen thread on there and some sequins and the card looks really nice. But then today I added birds and I added Wink Costello. You know? to that design. Here's actually, this is the one. I did a mother and baby bird. This is almost the same design. But you see what I'm saying? Like it's the same card, but like no comparison. Like it, it looks so much better with birds on it, I think. 
So I did that to the Easter cards. I did ones with birds and without birds, and I did it to that card, and I made a diaper fold pouch, et cetera, et cetera. But next one I want to show you, before we get into all that, I want to show you what happens when you, you're fighting with paper, what else you can do with this paper. And what I want to show you is this. Okay, so this is going to be, the, the skill you're going to learn next is called background scanning. It's, the concept is we're going to use a built-in shape that looks like this from the machine, and we're going to put it on the piece of paper we want and on the, over the area we want, and we're going to cut out a shape. And then what you can do then is have a frame and a shape. And you can put that on your designs, and I'll show you a card that I used that example with. All right, because this paper would be almost next to impossible to cut out with the scan and cut without isolating different areas. So here's the concept. Here's the part I did, and I'm going to leave this part for you to do. We'll do a couple up here using that shape. So we're going to, I'm going to load the mat again. Oops. Birdie, go away, birdie. Go away. All right. Loading the mat. Oh, what's really nice about the CM350, and if you're ever wondering, oh, no, am I using the right mat? You will know you're using the CM350 mat because the arrows load. You could, the arrows go from on both sides. So I can actually load the mat upside down. In fact, I will because I can. I'm going to go ahead and load the mat upside down. However, if you are using an SDX model, there is a diamond shape at the bottom and one arrow only. So if you have the wrong mat and you're like, my mat's not loading, I can't load my mat. It's because you're trying to use an SDX mat in a CM machine or vice versa, and you're never going to get it to load. They only load in the right kind of model. All right, for this one, I can leave my overhead light on because it doesn't matter because we're not scanning now. We're using a built-in pattern from our machine. Accessories can be found at my Amazon store, such as this really cool Brother Brer. All right, let's do the next phase of this tutorial. So when we're finished cutting, we're going to say okay, and we're not saving anything because we use direct cut, so we just go home and we delete all the patterns, and we're back to pattern and scan. This time, though, we're going to use the pattern. We're going to use a built-in pattern. And the built-in pattern that we're going to use is in the icon section. This is the shapes. We're not using the shapes. It's not one of the shapes. It's an icon. We're using the second set right here. And the set of icons we're using are frames. It's down here on the one, two, third row. Every model has this. Doesn't matter what model of scan and cut you're using. You may have a different number of patterns, but you all have icons. You might not have the exact same icons I have, but you do have a section called icons. Okay, now we're going to go down. You see there's tags in here, and I've done tutorials on these tags, and I've also done tutorials with this postage stamp and the flag. Lots of tutorials. So follow the channel for hundreds of tutorials. The one we want is going to be... Dun, dun, dun. i got to make sure I find the right one. Let's. It's this one. AR-K025. Okay, AR-K025. Now, we're not resizing it here. Let's resize it once it's on the mat. And there's a reason for that. I want to. I also want to do something. I want to rotate it, and I want to do other things to it. So let's just keep saying okay and get it on the mat. But we will, we will make two of them. Let's go ahead and put two, two of those on the mat. So there they are. Now, you're probably like, well, what good is that, right? They're like, I wouldn't even know where to put it. Like, how did you get it to be uh, centered on here? How did the birds become completely, like, in the right spot of the frame? Okay? So that might be what you might be asking yourself. Like, that looks cool, but how did they get, how did the birds get right there? Well, first of all, let me just tell you what size to make it. And then we're going to use the editing mode. And if you're, you're going to be using something... Similar if you're using an STX, it's edit mode. But we're going to go in here right now. We're going to resize. We're going to click on this button here, the up and down arrows, right? And we're going to resize this. We're going to just uh, change the width to four and a half. Now, when you change the width to four, oh, you have to move it away. You see, if, you, if it's too close to the side of the there, you can't change the size, Okay. So that's just a trick for you. So move it away from the side of the mat and make it 4.25. Okay, I like the audible sounds. 
I'm sorry, width 4.25 height. Let's see. All right, that's fine. Now we're going to take this and we're going to rotate it. Now, you know what? We probably, let me just undo that for a second. Let me just, one second, one second. What I think I need to do first is rotate it because the, I want it to be, first I'm going to rotate it. Okay, click on this button and rotate it 90 degrees. We'll do it again in a minute. Now I think it should be with 4.25. Because I was like, that looks way too big. It's because I didn't have it rotated yet. So rotate it first and then change the width. All right, screenshot everybody if you want, and I can write it down for you. But go ahead and screenshot that. That's the size you want it. I was like, that's way too big. Because if you don't rotate it, the width and height won't be the right one. 4.25 width and 3.26 height. All right, good. Now we're going to say okay. Now we're going to do that again. Okay, go, so let's do this again. Just It's always a review and we need two of them anyway. We're going to go to this button and we're going to rotate first. Use the rotation button. 90 degrees. It doesn't matter if you do 90 degrees to the right or to the left. It doesn't matter. I'm just used to going to the right. Okay, click okay. The width is 4.25. And the height is proportional. We, you can't change one without the other. Can't have one without the other. Love and marriage, love and marriage. All right, there we go. 4.25. Now, let's do this. This is so cool. You're going to use background scan. Background scan is going to take this mat and put it into the machine so we can use it as a reference point. Then we can go, oh, should we put the frame here over these three birds? That'll be cute. Or like here or here. Wherever you want to put it, it'll look cute. But it especially looks cute like over, you know, a few birds. Like it just looks cute like whenever you center the birds in it. Wherever you want to put it, it doesn't really matter. But we'll just do a couple of them. We could do one up here. Maybe, maybe we could do one there and one maybe over there. Okay? As long as they don't overlap each other. So that's the concept. So to do that... We're going to, actually, I should turn out the light even though it doesn't matter, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and turn out the light so you can see better. We're going to click OK, and we're going to use this button here called Background Scan. So we're going to click on that, and it's going to say Scan the Mat and Show It as a Background. OK, yes, that's what we want. It's a background. It's a reference point. So here it goes. Oh, thank you, Phil, for explaining how my tagged item show is a picture underneath the live chat box. See, I didn't even know that. Thank you so much. Okay, and it even tells you that I am commissioned. Okay, thank you. I'm glad to know that. Thank you, Denise. Um, I think I did add the eraser, Amy, to the Amazon store, but if not, I will because I have all kinds of cool categories for crafts. Oh, yeah. Um, if you can't activate yours wirelessly, it doesn't matter because you can do everything I'm showing you without being wireless. And you can always use the USB drive to mix, you know, to move things from one machine to the other. And um, hello, T. Barnes. Nice to see you. And hello, Mary from Kansas City, Missouri. All right. And Kathy is saying thank you. This is Kathy B. Bothwell, thank you so much for your videos on Scan and Cut. She's had your machine for a couple of years. And just learning how to use it. Say it isn't so. I hope that you will use it more. Please give your machine some love. Hello, Kim from South Africa. Hello, Diane. Hello, Jean from Virginia. Thank you, Shardine, for a plug for my Udemy courses. My Udemy courses are should be linked in the description. All right, anyway, let's get back to this. And then I hope I said hi to everyone. Pat from Oklahoma. Okay, let me get back to this. Now that the... Okay, so you might be saying, well, how can you even see that? Well, okay, first of all, I can see this, so I know what that's referencing. But there's a better way. I'm going to show you a setting to use, okay? So this is, this, is the back, this is the mat, but there's a setting to use to make the mat even darker. So, but let's say we want to put that one there and put this one here or whatever. But let me show you. I think that one will look really nice there. You see there's three little birds in the middle, but maybe you can't see that. You're like, what is she talking about? Let's go here to this, oops, wrong button. Okay, let's, maybe it's in here. 
Nope, it's not there. I'm trying to figure out where the little, here it is. It's on this one. Use this button here, the little wrench. You guys have the wrench built into your screen. That's what I'm used to, the SDX. In this one, the wrench is over on the plastic part. Now it says background, light, dark, or off. Okay, so we're going to say, okay, that's the light one. Go back to the wrench. That's the dark one, right? I'm going back to the wrench. Turn the background off. Okay, you know, the background doesn't matter if it's on or off, but we want to use the dark one. So if you can't see your pattern, just do the background, make it darker, and you can see the birds. I can see them very clearly, even if you can't see them. Here, I'll show you. Like, let's get in there and show you. See what I mean? I can see very clearly that the birds are centered into that pattern. So that's that's where you find it, over here. So anyway, let's zoom back out and do the whole, okay, and cut. So now it's cutting just the shapes. So it's not cutting your images because these will be hard to cut because these are, they're too close together, they would be hard to cut. Okay, I'm gonna show you how you use this in a card as well. All right, almost done. Ready to pull this off. All right. And you have a cute little bird pattern that you can pop up and an instant frame to go around it. And you have a great card element. So I'm gonna show you how I did that for my project. Three little birdies in the middle with the little frame around the outside, the bubble bath frame. Perfect. Mix and match, use other colors of paper. And here's your card. Here's an Easter card. I used two of the birds we cut out before, this frame element, and I popped this middle part up with dimensionals and used the celebration stamp set for the Easter. And when I say celebration, not only is this paper free, but this is free as well. Heartfelt hellos. This is a free stamp set when you spend $50. All right, so let's see. Would I do a video using trusty toolbox? Yes, planning on it next week. Before the end of celebration, I'll do trusty toolbox. But until then, I'm gonna be doing my card club, my monthly card club, um, my hot air balloon workshop series, et cetera, et cetera. I have a lot of other things planned, but yes, I plan on doing that. All right, so let's keep going. I usually show all the paper. The Flight and Airy Designer Series paper. I don't know what happened to my packaging, but it's like just, you know, gorgeous paper. And I want to show you that other piece that we can cut out using color recognition mode. Oh, there's some little birdies. And you're already seeing some of my examples. I'm saving my best example for last. I did a giant double fold or a giant diaper fold pouch. Okay, don't use the scan and cut on paper like this because there is no beginning and there is no end. There is no beginning and there is no end. There's a song about that. Anyway, made me think of it. Now look, you can't, there's no outline. You can't, there's no outline. There's no way the machine, if you're like, the machine won't do it. Wine, wine, wine. It's because the machine's not built to do a paper like this. It could never do it. It scans and there's no outline to scan. It cannot cut this paper unless you isolate sections. So if you want to cut certain sections, you could isolate them by pencils and tape and washi tape trick, acetate trick. You could do other things to get this to cut, but it, in the end, it wouldn't be worth it. Use the other side. It's pretty. All right, but there is this paper, and I was able to get this paper to work. So let's show you how I did that. All right, we're going to take this paper, and we are going to first scan it in black and white mode and show you what happens. All right, let me turn out the light. Start again. And we're gonna erase all the, oh, if you wanna save these, you don't have to erase them because they're the right size. Maybe you wanna go back and just save them. You could save them to your machine. Well, first, let me turn off the background. Otherwise, the background stays there and it gets annoying. And the next time you, next time you watch, right? Like next time you turn on your machine, this, the background will still be on the, screen and you'll think something's wrong. So make sure you turn off the background at that point. And then hit save and you want to save it to your machine, 
to Canvas Workspace, to your USB stick, or to the computer. Just save it to the first one. Okay, it's telling me there's not enough memory because I got too much on there. All right, that's okay. What can I erase? Um, I got too much on here. Never mind. But you would save it to your machine, and then it'll give it. And when you want to retrieve it, I should have one saved already. When you go to Pattern and you want to go to your saved data, because I already have one on my machine, it'll be the last one. And then I got to delete some stuff before it'll let me save any more. All right, too much on there. I don't want to delete right now because I'm in the middle of developing a course and I don't want to delete. But there's one I have saved from earlier. So that's how to save. I have 184 things saved right now. All right, now we're going to scan again and we're just going to do the, the same thing we did before, direct cut, da-da-da, and start. Okay, we're just trying to scan this the normal way because I want to show you something that happened to me. And thank you guys for liking this video. 73 are watching, 39 likes. So I hope the rest of you are watching actually like the video. Give it a thumbs up and that would, I appreciate it. And, you know, make some comments and don't be a blob. Don't be a blob. Participate. Don't be a couch potato. All right. Will you be live next week at the same time? No, I'm never at the same time because, well, no, it'll be around the same time probably. But no, it won't be next week. I don't think it'll be, it'll probably be like, I don't know, whenever I get, I don't know, maybe Wednesday. Not sure what day. Honestly, Judy, I can't schedule it because I have so much going on with my business as I have so many different things I do. Hello, Melody. Hello, Gina. Yeah, I don't know exactly when. Hello, Judy from Florida. And Gina's from Pennsylvania. And Mary has a CM350. I'm glad you do. Awesome. All right, so we're going to say okay. Now, the reason I did this is you're like, what in... The name of what is going on, nothing scanned, okay? I wanted you to see that on purpose, okay? Do you see that? Like, nothing happened. It's total crapola, okay? The only one that even tried to scan was that one. We got little specks, okay? So that's what I wanted you to see. Now go back and go back and go, or here, just go back, just go back to home and just start again. All right, so what I want you to do is don't even think like that. When you see something like that and you're in black and white mode, always try black and white mode first. Black and white mode, of course, is ideal because it takes no time. But when, when that happens to you, don't give up. Do this. Scan, direct cut, da-da-da-da-da. And instead of recognition mode, black and white, sometimes we have to do color recognition mode. Sometimes we have no choice. Like when we have only specs showing up, we need to use color recognition mode. It takes way longer. Not to scan, but to recognize it takes way longer. But it's worth it because I didn't use any pencil trick whatsoever. And look at my paper. This was all color mode. It did a fantastic job. It's just that I didn't see that it cut off a few flowers here and there. But it did a fantastic job. And that was my first try without doing anything else. All right, it's telling me frame the image. So we'll frame. I'm just going to leave it like that. Frame the image. And see how much longer it takes to recognize Oh, thank you, Christina's, Christina Van Real, Realate, Realty from New Zealand. Realte, Realte, I don't know how to say your name, but she's saying super tutorial. <laughs> so Tina says she actually likes that my videos are not scheduled. It's like happy anticipation and then crafty goodness. Well, you know what? I can't, I honestly am not a scheduling type of person. I do schedule, like I have a planner and I have a weekly Zoom and I have team meetings every, I have the team meetings every day for the past several years. My team meetings are on the second of the month, you know, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. But like, but I don't schedule the computer lives or the YouTube lives because I don't know when I'm going to be ready to show you the next project. Like I did this one in my, in my um, work, in my series, my Hot Air Balloon series. I just did these, right? And then I didn't know, like, I was going to do it till right before I did it. Like, I just, oh, I'm going to create this design. And then I'm like, oh, let me, let me go live. I, I created a new design. Okay. So are you understanding now that there is no reason to give up after black and white recognition mode where you only had one little guy over here showing up? And now we're using color recognition mode. And what do we have? We have almost every single thing being recognized. So now we could have given up and said, this doesn't work, wah, wah, wah. Or you can just use color recognition mode and it works. And now we're gonna do, 
Uh, again, the, we're going to do the ignore object size and get rid of small unwanted bits. Now, this time we're going to get rid of all the flowers. Whenever it doesn't do, like, actually, we should have gone back and, like, when the flowers are not connected, right? Let's, let's do this instead. Let's say okay. And let's do an outline distance, right? And let's manually get rid of what we don't want because when you do the outline distance, it will start connecting some of the pieces that were no longer... Like, we would if we would have ignored them, they would have disappeared. But now they become part of the connection and part of the whole flower thing that's connected. So that's really nice. So the bigger you do that, the bigger outline distance, the more forgiving, and the more you get the outside pieces to start coming together as one. But I'm only going to still use the 0 0.04 outline distance. But now we have pretty good success rate. Now, I could go back and use the pencil trick and finish up some flowers that are not cutting out. But I'm not going to cut them all out for you. I'm just trying to show you this concept, right? So we're going to say, okay. And we're not going to cut these yet. We're going to say, okay, again, and I want to, it's going to take a minute to process this because it's color recognition mode, but I want to get rid of a bunch of these because knowing now from this piece, which I didn't notice before. Okay. Just say it's saying there's a pattern outside the effective area. What it's telling you is there's a bunch of things close to the edge. So what that means when there's a pattern outside the effective area, it means there's something close to the edge. Okay, let's just take, I just want to go back and sort of go back to this, like, the one back here and just sort of zoom in for you and just frame it smaller. But I wanted to show you before I do all this that the success rate was very high by just simply using color recognition mode. But I'm not going to cut out everything on the mat. And I don't want to get rid of all the little bits and sit there and, you know, use the trash can all day long. But you are going to use the pencil trick. You're going to, you're going to see which ones you're going to zoom in there and you can kind of see, oh, that didn't outline. If I would have noticed that before, I wouldn't have cut it out. Now, it doesn't matter because all I do is, I like on the card, when I realize later, I'm like, oh, this flower got cut off a little bit. I just put a bird. See the flower got cut off? I just took a bird like over the top of it and it didn't matter. All right. So anywho, we're going to just say, okay, put some... I'm going to go 0 0.04 outline distance, and I'm going to just trash a few things that I don't want. So I zoomed in, and I'm going to... I could have ignored object size, but instead I'm just going to manually trash things because I want the control of not... I only want to cut out maybe like this one, maybe. In fact, I can even use the selection, and I can... I could select like a whole bunch of stuff at once and just like, you know, trash it all at once too. So... Basically, I don't really want these things. I'm just, maybe this one's okay. Yeah, no, that one, I, I might make a selection. That one, I better not. I'm going to trash everything but that one. Okay, that one should be okay. All right, I, I'm going to try these two. I don't want to be cutting all day. That's why I make, you know, I don't want to make you guys wait all day. But I just want to cut out a couple just to show you. It's processing... The, the only disadvantage of doing this color recognition mode is that it takes way longer. There's really no other reason not to do it. And sometimes it's hard to see if you get all the extra little bits in there. But it does do a great job, and it sure, do, it sure beats, like, you know, using scissors, is what I say. So let me show you a bunch of those while we're waiting. Just beautiful embellishments. Like, even if they cut off a little bit, these didn't cut off. These were fine. This one cut off. I can just, I can just cut around it with scissors. Like, some of these, if they cut, like, this one's perfect. But this one, you see how it cut off? I would just use scissors a little bit there and, you know, fix that. I was trying to find all these flowers. But, I mean, hello. How cool is that? All right, so we're done. Let's see. Okay, let's move. I'm going to go like this. Because I want you to see. I want you to see this because this is like, oh, ah! you know what I mean? Like you're going to be singing from the rooftops. Like when you when you do this and you didn't have to use the pencil and you didn't have to do anything and they, and you get embellishments like this, it's like, oh, my. Ooh, la, la, as I say. I mean, just amazing, right? Right off the paper. So you could... Again, ignore object size and all that, but it'd be better if, like, do a little test run in color, see that some of the 
just take it. This is what my advice is. Take it and go, okay. Like look down at your mat and see that it didn't really get them all and just kind of get your pencil and outline it again and then do another color scan and then you should get them like perfect for the first try and cut the whole page out at once. All right, so ready to show you projects. And I just want to put something down that's plain. Here we go. We'll use this one because it's plain. I know, it's perfect, right? It's just amazing. Amazing! All right, so here we go. We have the Mother's Day cards. This was my before and after of my celebration club where I already thought it was cute, <laughs> right? Using the heartfelt hellos. And then I was like, and then I put a couple birds on it. It looks like mama looking over at the little baby or not baby, teenager, teenager bird. And like looking over, watching out for the bird. Okay. And then I did the before and after Easter cards. So I did these during my celebration club. And when I did the celebration first card, I made this one, but I didn't have this little piece of paper. So I already thought this was an improvement, just putting this little piece of paper behind there. And the paper's already so cute, and it already has cute birds. But then when you add the little family of birds on there, pop them up and add some Wink Stella for the glitter on them, then it just becomes a whole nother level of card. So that's your before and after. And then this one, what you're going to do for this one is just use your little frames and you in the reverse like so you're going to pop you're going to glue this one down pop this one up with dimensionals and then you get this effect whoops this effect with the popped up frame and then you have a couple birds again with some glitter on them wink of stella and then you have this mother's day card which has a whole bunch going on i put a frame on the outside and then i use the same paper this is from the paper and then I put, the, I put the strip across the middle. I put this Lost Lagoon piece. And you might not be able to see it, but there's tiny little birds in this piece too. And I put that, a strip of that behind there for contrast. And then I use both kinds of birds, both kinds of paper. The birds that I cut out like this. And then I use the birds that are single. And again, mama looking down, looking over at the, here's the mama. Or you could say mommy, daddy, and baby. Or you could say mama looking down at the two young ones. Happy Mother's Day. And then, again, my little flower got cut off a bit, and I just put the tail of the bird right over the top of that so I didn't even have to fix it with scissors. So that's how to use. So now you know how to use all the pieces, or, or how to use the single birds, how to use this piece, but my best project is last, and that is my diaper fold. I did a giant diaper fold using all the little pieces all in one project. I did, I made, I used a eight and a half inch of this paper, I was careful to get the pattern going so you could see the birds like upright on the back side, and that even when you folded it, that they were upright on the front side. And then I folded it down and I glued the pieces here and here to hang out the edges to make it more 3D. And then I put one more little bird down there and I used a thank you from one of my card clubs. Let's see what that was called. Circle Sayings, I believe. That was one of my card clubs. I just had some extra sentiments already made and hopefully I inked it in the right color. So we have a Ghirardelli caramel chocolate from Valentine's Day. We have a few different little milk chocolates and some teas. This is just a great big fold. Oh, I had more chocolate in there. Okay, these were all in there. So we'll, we'll reload it to see how much room there is when you do a giant diaper fold. So this is a honey stick. And then we got the tea. And then we got some more tea. I like these little see-through teas. They're kind of they're cool looking. So you had a couple teas, and then you put the little chocolates in there, down like that, and then you put the extra chocolate, the cute ones sticking out the back. So it's a stuffed diaper fold for, you know, for when you're doing a 3D swap or something, you can use like a giant diaper fold. And I've done diaper folds in this channel, but I just never usually do them so big. I usually use six by six paper, but I really like the way that came out. And, you know, we've been doing things with the Celebration products all month long on my channel. So stay tuned because the next time I do a Celebration Club video, I will probably have more bird projects to show you. And also going on in my channel that's not Stampin' Up! related is the card club that we're working on this week. My Card on Blue Card Club. You can join. Well, you won't, you won't get this month's kit, but next month we're working with the cows. The cutest cow bundle. Just super cute. Also going on on my, and this is 
So next month's Cart Club is open for registration, and that's focused on the cutest cows. And then we're also, this month, we're working on Hot Air Balloon as my workshop series. And we're, you know, we've made all kinds of cards on this channel already, and shaker cards and note cards. This is, here, this is Amy's card. She's here. She's one of my team members. She's on this channel. I was just showing that. And this is one of the cards. So we made shaker cards. And we're making this card. We're making this card soon on my channel. So anyway, if you like card making in general, not just scan and cut, we do all kinds of card making in this channel, then please come check out my videos because there's always something new each week. All right, well, that is all for now. I'm just going to see if I missed anybody to say hello to. What size paper did I use? Uh, eight and a half. So think of it as a, here, the way to remember eight and a half and I tried, I experimented, trust me. I was like trying to get all the stuff to fit in there. Six by six just doesn't work. Six by six is only gonna hold one tea bag and it sticks out. And it's only gonna hold like one Ghirardelli chocolate and it sticks out. You can't get the you can't get this honey stick in there and this stuff starts falling out. So the way to remember it's eight and a half is this. The the size of cardstock. That's what I did. That's the size of a square. Always start with a square. And uh let's see. Okay, wait, I have a minute I can show you. I'm just going to show you real quick how to do this. But I'm going to use, I'm going to use this piece of paper. I'm going to show you how to make this diaper fold. So stick around and then I'll, I'll go because we're not up to an hour. I like to always make my videos no longer than an hour. So let's go here. All right. I'm opening up the Stampin' Up! trimmer. I'm doing eight and a half. Boom. The paper comes 12 by 12, 12 sheets in a pack. Right? You're going to make a square. That's what you're going to do. An eight and a half inch square. Anytime you make a diaper fold, you make a square. Now you need the ledge. Always use the ledge of your trimmer. Or your... Use the ledge of your trimmer. Or use the ledge... Of whatever, like, of your... Simply squared. And then you're going to make a triangle. Okay, triangle. All right, now, the trick is to make sure that the birds are upright on the back. So you want the birds upright on the back. Now on the front, it doesn't matter if they're upright because this is going to be folded over and this is going to be folded over. Okay, so you get that? So the back is upright. The birds are upright. Now, before you do anything, don't go pinching off this diaper fold. The reason it gets the diaper fold is it looks like a diaper. Look, little baby's legs go through the diaper. It looks like a diaper. Okay, so the only trick is when you make a diaper fold, you always have a triangle. You start, you, you make it a triangle. The side you want showing is out. Now, you want to take this piece and you want to be able to fold this down so you can cover these flaps. So you want to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So you go like this. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So I'm going to keep on working this thing until it's even. So you're going to... So you want these to be sort of flush. So that's going to fold over like that. And this is going to fold over like that. But it's not really flush until you sort of take this little flap down and sort of wiggle it. And you wiggle it until this flap, this little piece, is hidden under that little piece. And that, and that it's kind of even. So you want, it to, you want it to be even, you know, left, right. So you want these to be straight. So that's the first thing. You want these to be straight if you can. And you want this to fold down. You don't need any rulers. Don't let anybody tell you you need to measure anything. No, you have to work the paper. You are a papered chef. You are working the paper. And you're going to pinch. When you get it worked out where you want it, you have to hold the side and pinch. Grab the other side. You do need two hands for this. It's, it's definitely like you got to pinch the sides. Okay? Pinch, pinch, pinch. Now... At that point, you can squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, and then you can get out your bone folder. Don't you dare get out your bone folder before this because you're going to mess it up. You have to have your, all your pieces flat before you get out your bone folder. Now, now you can get out your bone folder and make sure when you're about to crease it that this is up hidden under there. Get it back up under there. Push it. Push it good. All right. You're going to go like that. And you're going to turn it around. You're going to go like that. Now, now it's creased. So now we're good. 
Now this part's golden. This part was already good. Now you got your corners, got everything hidden, beautiful flowers. Now you're going to open it back up. Don't skip this part, even though it looks like you don't need to do this part. Get out your, your seal plus or whatever adhesive. Don't use glue. Just get out your rolling adhesive. Open it up and put... There, get my, I have to have the board again. All right, put this here. Okay, open it back up. Put a little bit of adhesive there. Fold it down. A little bit of adhesive there. Fold it down. Okay? And that's because my bird is facing up. If you still got a bird upside down, you can cover it with an embellishment. A little bit of adhesive here and there. Fold the flap down. Making sure that you're covering that seam. Okay? And now you're going to use the embellishments that we just created with our scan and cut. And you're going to put them all around. That's why we just did all this beautiful work. We should, let me switch it up. We should definitely not put the same bird on there twice here. So here's one facing, you'd want to face one this way, put it on the corner face. So like, you see what I'm saying? Like get two different kinds of birds. One facing this way, glue that on and then glue that on. And then get a little birdie, put your little sentiment there and get a little bird there. Some Wink of Stella and stuff it with some crafty goodness. So that is how to make a giant diaper fold. So that's something new we haven't done on this channel. All right. Thank you, Judy, Caroline, Janet, Betty, Linda from Stamp, Cut, and Create. Thank you for being a channel member. Thank you, Jean, Denise, and Amy. Have a great weekend. All right. Have a great night. That's all for now. This is The Paper Chef.